XNTV. This program is rated PG. It is suitable for children ages 8 and above, but parental guidance is advised as it might contain mild violence and mature situations. Good evening viewers, those who are watching us from within Uganda and in the diaspora. We thank you that you have made NTV your number one station, but also NTV People's Parliament your favorite program. It is yet another Saturday when this People's Parliament gives Ugandans an opportunity to speak about issues that affect their everyday life. And tonight we have a very important topic that does not only affect few people in Uganda but the entire country and that is the land question. We are in Soroti district to discuss the land question. This is NTV People's Parliament chaired by none other than your speaker Agnes Nandotu. Honorable members, you are welcome to NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Soroti district. This is a week of awareness on land rights, the land laws in Uganda, not only in Soroti but the entire Uganda. And the theme is our land, our heritage for social economic development. Are you aware of the land rights in Uganda? Are you aware of your rights about land? Do you know the laws pertaining land in Uganda? Do you know how to acquire a land title? Those are the things that we want to debate now and sensitize the public on the land laws in Uganda. Yes, honorable members, before I kick the ball, I would like to invite an expert from the Ministry of Lands to give us an overview. Thank you very much, honorable speaker, uh, honorable members of the People's Parliament. I am right, honorable Oleko Abdunasa. Uh, the theme, Our Land, Our Heritage for Social Economic Development, is quite appropriate for the efforts the government is doing through the Ministry of Lands to ensure security of tenure for all the people in Uganda. But not just security of tenure for any other people other than people on customary land. Our experience shows that customary land has been the most vulnerable and most susceptible to abuse and land grabbing by various uh, scrupulous, unscrupulous people and uh, entities. So it's for that reason that more and more efforts have been made by government to ensure that this land is secured. Honorable Speaker, as a ministry, we are at the forefront of ensuring tenure security, as indeed guaranteed under what the What have you done to ensure that? That's where I'm going, Honorable Please. Speaker. To ensure tenure security, we have started uh, a number of initiatives. Uh, the first one, particularly on customary land, is tenure security by providing uh, certificates of customary ownership to customary owners on land. Those certificates have been very instrumental to helping our people uh, obtain documentation on their land. You all so know which that... Which number of Ugandans have ob obtained this documentation, these certificates? So far, we have uh, issued over 10,000 of these certificates in various regions. In which period? Uh, it's, a, it's a period uh, of five or six years. Ten, 10,000 people only have got certificates. Yes, but it's a, it's a work in progress. Are you not speaker. slow? <laughs> yes, you may call it slow, but uh, I would like to borrow the adage, we are, uh, we, are, we are moving at a slow progress, it's a steady progress. And, uh, <laughs> and we are moving towards ensuring our target is at least 500,000 certificates uh, to every customary tenant by at least 2025. Uh, Honorable Speaker, we have also decentralized our services as a ministry. We have opened the ministry zonal offices. We are trying to ensure that land services are not only accessible, but they are also near the people. We have opened ministry zonal offices. Uh, so far, we, have, uh, we started by piloting. But the information that we have in the public domain that people acquire land titles from Kampala to come and grab land in the villages. Uh, Madam Speaker, unless uh, we get uh, specific cases, we cannot generalize issues like that. So far, what we have done is to ensure that 
every zonal office, we have categorized the country into zonal offices uh, under what we call technically cadastral zones, where every office serves a region and, a, uh, and certain districts under that region. I'm happy to announce that in Soroti, uh, just next door, we are building a state-of-the-art ministry zonal office, which will not only uh, house the land information system, but it also serve as a one-stop shop for all land-related services for the people, the people of Soroti. Uh, Honorable Speaker, as I wind up, I would like to emphasize the government's position on land tenure security, that we are working tirelessly to ensure that every customer owner of land gets a documentation on their land so that their land can be protected. Without documentation, Honorable Speaker, people on their land will not be secure. So that is what we are moving forward with, and that's what we hope to achieve by the year 2025. By the year 2025. Yes, Honorable Speaker. Let's hope you achieve the dream. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. I give you three minutes, Honorable. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I am um, Honorable Stella Lutalo, representing Pelham, Uganda. And um, I would like to highlight a few things about this People's Parliament. Uh, this People's Parliament has been organized as part of the Land Awareness Week 2018 that is being held here in Soroti. The Land Awareness Week is part of a, a Right to Food program that is supported by Oxfam. And uh, implementing partners include Pelham, Uganda, where I come from, Copaxo, ESAF Uganda, Food Rights Alliance, and IFPRI. And uh, we have worked closely with uh, other partners to organize this event, including the Ministry of Lands, securing land rights, and the right to seed will enable us realize the right to food. So from that background, I would like to highlight a few things that we, or issues that we have come across. Um, as part of our work during this week, the Land, the land Awareness Week. And these issues are from uh, Soroti, but also affect uh, vulnerable men and women all over this country with regard to land rights. One of the issues is uh, women's land rights, which are a big challenge. Whereas the Constitution of Uganda provides for the right to own property, including property for women, Land has, been, has proven to be a big challenge in terms of control and ownership by women. They usually have access to land but do not have ownership and control rights. And we have found that when it comes to widows, it's a double disadvantage because they are not, um, they, they do not get, they do not get inheritance to land in most traditional settings and uh, which also creates vulnerability for the children that they have. The children they have from that, that, that marriage, as well as the children they also have from when they remarry, they have challenges of ownership of land. But we also have found out that uh, most men do not leave wills when they die, which increases the vulnerability to women to own land. Madam Speaker, we have also found that access to justice is a big challenge to um, many vulnerable men and women. We have many land disputes countrywide, and these range from uh, family disputes, from boundary conflicts, illegal land sales, and conflicts involving institutional land versus community interests. But Madam Speaker, we have also discovered that we have a number of justice systems in place that are both formal and informal, but have a number of constraints to deliver justice to vulnerable men and women. Under the formal justice systems, we find that the systems are usually complex, there are usually many delays, and there are also usually high costs involved, which do not permit uh, ordinary vulnerable men, and especially women. So they will always take their land. Yes. Because they have the money. Yes, true, Madam Speaker. Then under the informal uh, uh, justice system, there are also a lot of biases against women because most of these systems are dominated by men and women are not given uh, opportunities to own land. And this is also worsened by inequality where the powerful and the rich usually get justice 
at the expense of uh, other poor people. Madam Speaker, there are also challenges of land administration structures, like uh, the Honorable Member mentioned, and uh, uh, the district land boards and area land committees have gaps in their functionality and are often underfunded, and they are also, there's also inadequate capacity when it comes to the tools and the legal documents to guide their work. There's also lack of clarity on the roles of some cultural institutions. The CCOs have a lot of controversies around perceived intentions for registration, which um, the, organ the August House need to discuss further and we get clarifications on uh, these controversies. Then uh, finally, the issues of pastoralists uh, should also be looked into, Madam Speaker. Mm -hmm. There's increased encroachment on communal grazing land and water points, where there's a lot of uh, um, titling by individuals of this land, and also increased privatization of land that makes grazing land less accessible to pastoralists. Okay. So, Madam Speaker, those are some of the issues we've got from the communities mm -hmm. as part of this Land Awareness Week okay. that would be uh, discussed in detail. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Pelham has brought up a number of uh, issues on, on land, but what has got my ear is the controversies surrounding the certificates on the customer land. What are these controversies you people of Soroto, you should be knowing? What are the controversies? Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker. I am Honorable Moses Emugu Eroji Moses, the Sabu County Chairperson, Katine Sabu County. Madam Speaker, the controversies in this uh, tenure, if you go to our Constitution, Article 237, it clearly states that we have four tenure systems. But the challenge that I have in our tenure system of uh, customary is that uh, there's somewhere it states that you will you you can convert you can convert the customary tenure into into freehold, and yet you cannot convert freehold or lease into customary. As honorable member, I would appeal to government that for us we are okay with the tenure system, mm -hmm. but we would put the, the customary tenure system at par with the other tenure system. In case if we register in the customary system, what will happen in the future? And where will, where will our people again get money to convert it into other freeholds or into a, a freehold or a leasehold. I think that problem can be tackled immediately. Uh, uh, among the four land tenure systems we have obtaining in Uganda, the only land tenure system that has always been with us is the customary tenure system. The rest are foreign. The Milo tenure system came as a result of the, Uganda, the 1901 Uganda agreement. The leasehold tenure system is a foreign concept introduced by the colonialists. The freehold system was imported from Britain and brought here. Mm -hmm. So in my view, I think even the, the, one, the customary tenure system that is obtaining is stronger than the others because it, it emanates from the customs of the people. Mm -hmm. it, it is a system that really brings out the, the true identity of, of Ugandans. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of protection, yes, it is true, the CCO is not equivalent to a certificate of title because a certificate of title is issued under the uh, Registration of Titles Act, a law that was also brought by the British. But however, it doesn't take away its, uh, its, its magnitude. It doesn't take away its, uh, its, its key features, and that is the customs of the people. So uh, if you're worried about uh, freehold vis-a-vis customary land, in any case, both are held in perpetuity. The only difference is that freehold is surveyed land with conditions in respect to physical planning, and customary is held under okay. the customs of the people. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for that light. Please, you have to meet Honorable Member. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I'm called Honorable Irao Susan. I work with Land and Equity Movement in Uganda. Okay. Critical to this debate is the fact that the law proposes that the 
CCO can be converted into a freehold. And as you heard him saying, if the law says these are now at par, then why convert? We need a law that places customary land tenure at equal footing with the other three customary land tenure systems. Uh, on top of that, currently we feel that even with the issuing of the CCO, there's a very big distortion in government, in, in the governance of customary land tenure. Because as you heard the official from the ministry say, that the law provides that customary land tenure will be governed according to the norms and practices of a particular community. And so that means the clan leaders play a very critical role in the management of customary land tenure. But as you see, the CCO is being, uh, the work around CCO is being managed by area land committees. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a foreign arrangement and it really excludes the clan leaders from the role of managing and governance of uh, customary the land The issuing of certificates, they, they issuing, exclude the... Exclude the role of clan leaders. Thank you, honorable member. So let's go for a short break and when we come back we shall hear more from the people of Soroti. TV, turning on your world. So welcome back. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Soroti District, chaired by none other than your speaker, Agnes Nandut. And the topic is our land, our heritage for social economic development in this country. Thanks to Oxfam, together with NTV, to ensure that Ugandans know the island rights. Wherever you are, whether you are in Karamoja, or you are in Bududa, or you are in Chisoro, the land issues affect each and every Ugandan. Yes, honorable members, the debate is on. Thanks very much, Madam Speaker. I'm Edward Simon Peter Eku. Today in Uganda, we know 95% of our issues all our crimes in villages come from land. What special packages are you coming up with? So not in particular, you came with systematic land demarcation that hit a rock somewhere. Can we fully come back and engage our people? What happened to it? The ministry sent a team that did not give the information earlier. You know, it's important that when you're taking up anything new, people must understand what you're coming to do. But the ministry sat and um, just imagined, like, so that people, particularly the Kamuda, knew what they're coming to do. So it hit a uh, hard rock. We also have a challenge with honorable members of parliament. We have put we have made everything. Which parliament? This parliament? This the parliament. Uh -huh. We have changed everything to go political. If you want to drink, when you want to, drink, to drink water, you want to see the color of cup they are going to use for serving you water. When you want to get a border, you want to see the cushion before you sit. <laughs> Whereby people who have information about land rights are not giving our people the information. They bring the party bit of it, the political bit of it. Now, you divert Ugandans from the real sense. You do not give them the information. You hide the information so that <laughs> at the end of the day, you want to tell them what they want to hear, but you don't tell them facts. Can we go down to our constituencies and tell our people facts? OK, thank you. Thank you very much, Thank you, Madam Honourable Speaker. Two minutes, Honourable Member, please. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. I'm Honorable Rebecca Apio. I work for Trocare, one of the development partners. Madam Speaker, I think the biggest challenge we have in this country is the implementation of the laws and policies. And I'd like to, to read uh, the policy statement 39, which states that states shall recognize customary tenure to be at par with the rest of the tenure systems. It is here in the national land policy. <laughs> the challenge we have is the but implementation. It is not at par with other. No, it is not. The state should bring it at par with other systems. And then it goes ahead to say the state shall ensure 
that there are customary registries in place. But as we speak now, there is no customary registry operational in any region in the country. So we'd like, you know, our government, the Ministry of Land, to let us know uh, whether there are any plans to implement the national land policy or not, so that we can put it aside. Five years back, no implementation. The people of Soroti have said, please. Honorable Naba Monica from East Africa Civil Aviation. You realize that uh, customary land is owned by families. Am I right? Yes. When they are owned by families, in those families, women are inclusive. Women give birth. Women cultivate. I'm talking about the rural women. Women take care of that land. But when it comes to ownership, the same her. men say women are not supposed to own land. Yeah. <laughs> and no man is clapping for that. <laughs> the second point is uh, we realize that most divorced women are grabbed land by relatives of their husbands. Remember when they go back home, there is no they also deny them. them the land by their brothers and relatives. So where should they go? Those were my two points, my Thank two you. concerns. Thank you. The woman owns no land where she's born and she owns no land where she is married. A woman without land, there would be no food in this country. Two minutes, please, when I remember you have the podium. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And I want to give a clear scenario, the Minister of Lands Officer, to understand that the laws on customary land tenure system is very much gender biased. The women in terms of the girl child and the women in terms of the married women are the most vulnerable and affected. Now, this is the case. A woman will be married. Like, take for instance, me, B.O.B., I've married my, my two wives. My grandparents or my father left me with maybe some acres of land. I've married my two wives. One maybe produces only girls, and the other one maybe boys and girls. Now, a case will happen whereby me, their father, has passed on, God forbid. And now the other woman is officially married as my wife, and she has only girl children. You find that there is a situation where by now, the thinking of the clan people is that these girls are going to get married, so they will get land somewhere else. That is an assumption. Not all girls will get married. Now, these children are born maybe in a wedlock, in a married lock. They are girls, and they belong to this land, and this is where they belong. Even if they are going to get married somewhere, this is what belongs to them in the first place. Now, their father, their, father, their father has died, their father has died, they are left with their mother. What now happens, since the law says customary land will be owned in accordance with the customs and the cultures of that tribe or that cultural setting, these girls will miss out on this land. Now, where will they go? There are situations like in my place in Tubur there, an old woman was married. She even went back after the husband died. She went back to where she comes from. Then the old people in the clan called her back that, come, you're formally married in our clan. This is your piece of land. This old woman produced only four girls. And when she came back, she was officially handed over land in a meeting. Now she dies. She has left only girls. Now they want to take away the land, telling them that you don't belong here. So I want the land's person, the expert, to clearly explain to the people and come with some formalities to rescue the women and let's save these women from the problem. Okay. Thank, you very much. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I am Honorable March Pillow Daniel, representing business community. I would like the ministry, whenever they come with the policies concerning land, Awareness. those policies must favor the local man down there. Most of their policies do not favor local people. We are here today sensitizing people about their rights. But Madam Speaker and Honorable Members, I'm also aware in the other sister parliament, there is an issue of land. We never know what will happen, but what I know, it's a matter of time. 
and it will also come to pass. <laughs> and these rights we are talking about today will be shifted from people, maybe to government, as it is put there. So the issue of land, even if we visited our courts here, 85% of cases in the court are land-related. So the ministry must do a lot. When you talk of acquiring a certificate on customary, the process is very tedious and, and expensive. expensive yeah. Talk of a land title is also very expensive, which a local man down there cannot afford. So people in the villages there have resorted not to actually follow any process. You will so find a person, the island using it. a panga and a hoe. Someone <laughs> will go and sit in his garden and wait for that one who comes to grab his land. <laughs> So these things must be streamlined, Madam Speaker. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Madam thank Speaker. Thank you. Uh, you have a minute, Honorable Member. You have one minute, please. Thank you, Madam Speaker. By the names, I'm okay, Simon Peter. The most secure land tenure system is customary. Yeah. <laughs> That's their position. Why are they saying this? When you read papers, when you look at the TV, someone cannot, in it is, someone cannot grab, let's say, five to six acres of land. For them, they believe if someone has a CCO title, that CCO title can be stolen or can be grabbed from somebody from the USA. It is very easy for somebody to buy land when he's even in the USA. Using That's, what? What do they use? Um, I think they, I, they believe because that document, someone can say that I have here, here is my land title. But for them, they believe this issue of demarcation using uh, tree, uh, tree species like CISO. That's what they use always to demarcate their boundaries. Yeah, there are cases that but for them, they believe that they can resolve those cases maybe through our courts here. But this issue of titling is that fear. That's why the number of those ones going to register, uh, there are few. There are few. Time up. Okay, Let, thank you so please, much. one minute for you. Yes, thank you so much, Madam Speaker. And some of the issues that we're talking about in relation to land rights, especially under customary land tenure, are not really the customs because our customs are provided for in this PPRR yes. that women, or, I mean children, boys and girls that are born to a family have the right to inherit land. Yes. So some of these things are not the customs but they're just abuses which we need to work on. How then shall we bring on board the clan leaders? How do we bring on board the clan leaders? to be able to understand who are ill-informed about some of these laws. Two, there's an issue of the area land committee. These are, land lo these are local land administration structures that do not have a vote to be able to do their work. Even when they go and do some work somewhere to do inspection and demarcation, they're expected to bring part of that money, certain percentage back to the sub county, which is not plowed back to support their work as local land administration structures. So can we then, task government to be able to provide a vote, or districts to be able to provide a vote for the area land committees to be able to administer land effectively and increase access Thank to you. land issues. Thank you. Uh, there are some issues they did of government business in people's parliament. There are some issues that have been raised. Please. Uh, the CCO is meant for the common man. And secondly, Madam Speaker, it's not true that the CCO is a very tedious, lengthy and costly exercise. To the contrary, actually, it is very cheap. How much? The CCO costs 10,000 shillings. In addition, it does not take a lot of time as my so Honourable... So it takes 10,000 shillings to have a certificate? Yes, it takes 10,000 shillings, Honourable Speaker. Is that true, Honourable Members of who? who has acquired a certificate here in this house? Come and tell us the truth. <laughs> the process is tedious. Why? There are corrupt corruption tendencies on the ways. When you are calling for a community to come to demarcate this land, to go around, still you have to pay more than that 10,000. We paid for a certain woman 200,000 just for a community. Because in Iteso here, there's what they call we have to 
I build it your long way. People have to sit and then now you have to pay them. Now when we went to the area land committee itself to get the application letters, we were charged 50,000 for application letter. Depending on the, 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 the certificate. Yes. Oh, how do I remember? Madam this, is become, this is becoming an issue, how do I remember? He says 10,000 shillings to acquire a certificate. He has, gone, he, has got, he has got evidence that they used 200,000 shillings, and the land committees to give an application form takes 50,000 shillings. How do I remember? Let's go for a short break, and when we come back, we are going to hear more from these people. TV, turning on your world. Yes, welcome back. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Soroti District debating about land issues. As I always tell you that NTV People's Parliament is the only platform in this country that gives one inch an opportunity to issue out issues that affect their everyday life. They are now airing out their views on the land, the problems that they incur while managing their land. And TV with a partnership from Oxfam is here in Soroti to ensure that these people air out their issues about land. Honorable member, this is becoming very controversial now. The official fee is just 10,000 shillings to acquire a certificate of customary land ownership. Just 10,000 shillings. A lady used 200,000 shillings to acquire. Is there somebody from the land committees here? You are from the land... Are you from the land committees? But I want somebody from the land committees. Are you from the land committee? No. From the land board. I think you have some authority over the land committees, right? Come and give us the reasons why they demand for 50,000 shillings. The, the implementation of the CCO is directly from ministry but with the implementing partner, that's GIZ. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I think they are not represented here. The idea was that we give our communities certificate of customer ownership at a relatively a very cheap and affordable cost. And that is 10,000? That is 10,000, that's actually according to the ministry standards. But I cannot verify because personally myself, I've never been in the ground especially to inspect to ascertain how much our people pay. Why? Our lower local governments, where the LO3 theories, the sub-county chiefs, are the key persons who are monitoring the project. LO3 chairman, why, why, why are they taking 50,000 shillings from the people? It is very clear that you tell the truth, and the truth will set you free. Yes. Uh, one, we are aware that he, these people, they don't have any vote at any level. That is the first incidence, neither at the sub-county or at the district. What happens? The district stakeholders, I mean the district council, passed a resolution to all the lower local council, saying whenever, if they, when, when, when the real land committee, when the real land committee are going maybe to inspect any land, whether it is customary, whether neither uh, uh, freehold, they should charge 200,000. Why 200? 150 for them, then 200 goes to the sub county as a revenue. Tower. So that is transport or what? For them, because for, for them to move, <laughs> the real and committee to facilitate them. Are you, you are aware that, let's, let's be honest, we are aware that these people are not facilitated. And that is why they are like that. If we say we are just going to tell them that you look for your facilitation, then we are going to give these people are not going to work. Uh, and that is for them. Okay, Thank honorable member. So now, this, this becomes very, very complicated. They, this lady wants to say something. Let's, Mama, come. Honorable Speaker, all the protocol observed, <coughs> the policies can be laid. But even after being put in place, you find that there is no implementation that is taking place. That is one of the problems that I'm seeing. Another problem that I'm seeing is that these organizations, I want to thank them very much for they came and they have actually, after seeing 
the problems that we went through, the challenges that we went through, they have been able actually to lobby and advocate for us on our behalf. Thank you, Honourable Member. Time up. I guess I, I, I'm just concerned about the the discrepancies about the fees that is being paid, uh, Honourable Member, the lead of government business. Because uh, you, you have actually given the, the, this committee's mandate to issue out these uh, certificates of customary land ownership, but there is no money, and they have ended up, I would call it, extorting money from the people. From 10,000 shillings to 200,000 shillings, it is too much for a widow in the village of where? Where do you come from? Uh -huh. Uh, Madam Speaker, it's because one, we as government have a funding gap in relation to funding area land committees. So uh, it is okay for them to take the 200,000? No, 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 it's not okay. But in any case, we are, we are revising the law as we speak. We have made new regulations which are yet to be gazetted. We are going to set a threshold for how much a, 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 an area land committee or how much a sub county like his can uh, pass by, by, uh, by, by, by law. To, for, for the area committee to charge. And so, when will be that, please? We are working on the law as we speak. So I'm hopeful by the end of this year we shall have that law gazetted. The end of this year or the end of next month? <laughs> <laughs> Madam Speaker... The, the land question is very... They have told you that people have lost lives and people have lost Yes, Madam Speaker. Fingers. It is very regrettable that some people have lost lives, mm. but also we need to streamline the processes. Okay. Yes, Madam. Let's wait. Let's hope by the end of this year there will be an official fee in place such yes, that there are no. Thank you, sir. Yes, Honorable Member, you have two minutes. Uh, Madam Speaker, my colleagues, the Honorable Members of this August House, my name is Enomu Vincent. Madam, the issue of land in this country, there are people who are wise in this country, even in the ministries where my brother comes from. When they realize there is a mineral deposit somewhere, like in Tesla, I'm told they have come. <laughs> they will come and buy that place at, at a high, higher price so that they come, when the government comes to put something there, they know already the value of the land where they are buying. And those are the people, and my brother is here, he says he comes from the Ministry of Land. He might be one of them. And he might be one of them. He has already <laughs> known where the things are. <laughs> Madam Speaker. Well, you are protected. You are not one of them. Hold on, hold on. Wind Madam, up, please. Madam, I'm winding up. <coughs> Madam Speaker, it is true. Sensitization in this country, even the, the constitution of this country, even the land matters that these people are carrying, the locals down there, they don't know. Who is responsible for sensitizing everybody about land matters? People are just cheating these old women who never went to school. People are doing, they come and say, sign here, sign here, and the next day they are telling you, you have sold the land. Okay. I am requesting Minister of Land. <coughs> Please talk to Minister of Justice. They should really help us and judge some of these cases very fast. Otherwise, people are dying in these courts. Madam, land issue is really very, very serious in this country. Okay. I thank you so much. Thank you. Two minutes, please, Honorable Member. Honorable, Honorable Speaker, why don't our parliament get other bills to be discussed and agreed upon, leaving, first of all, about this land? Because the moment you touch about land, people of Teso run, their mind tells them the government is coming to take the what? the land. But the issue of paying the 500 or even 300 is not an issue to the village, to the village or the common man. Yes, because in the, in the sub count I come from, there are people. It is an Honorable issue speaker, to them, you can Honorable hear speaker, them. am I protected? You are protected, please. Wind up, you are protected. Honorable Speaker, I have, people, I have even people in my community who are pestering me, they are asking, when are, we, when are you people coming to implement the CCO thing? Then lastly, the court processes. We always refer cases of land to court. But the process takes okay. long. It takes a long time. Yes, so just the government the... can work on and put things right okay. so that we speed up the process in so court. So justice Thank is you. being delayed somewhere. Thank you. Please, you have two minutes, Honorable Member. Thank you very much, uh, right Honorable Speaker. I'm Honorable Benjamin Mutambuka from the Coalition of Pastoral Resource Organizations. About three years ago, there was a program we were told 
that government was going to borrow money from the World Bank and assist the communities in northern Uganda and eastern Uganda for every household to access a land title at a cost of 70,000 shillings. I would like to learn from the ministry what became the fate of this. Has it been, what is going on? Was it shelved or what is going to happen with that? Then I also want to say that in the management of the range runs, which form 44% of this country, so many users are coming in. It's not only pastoralists now. Uh, the government, for more than six years, the Ministry of Agriculture has been working out on a, a policy, the range and management and pastoralism policy, but would like this thing to be accelerated so that people can use the range runs without conflict. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senior Citizen. I think you have heard about the recommendations brought by the senior citizen. Uh, I want to hear from our partners. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. My name is Honorable Jonathan Ochom from Oxfam, Uganda. I um, would like to thank the people of Soroti for the deliberations and uh, touching on many issues about land that some of which Oxfam and his partners are working on. But I think just to emphasize that if you look at, follow all the discussions that we've had today, the key issue really rotates around policy implementation. We are creditors of the country for having very many excellent laws and policies, but the challenge always comes with the implementation. A quick example today has been a discussion around the area land committees and the facilitation. So you notice that area land committees, these land boards are structures within the local government or say for Soroti here. To what extent is Soroti this local government facilitating area land committees to do their work? Maybe we'll not be having some of these discussions if by the next financial year we know that there's some little money allocated to support the operations of the area land committees and the district land boards. Okay. Otherwise, we'll come back next year and we'll be talking the same issues back and forth. So I think these are issues of advocacy that we should pick at uh, the local level and we implore the Soroti district local government and all other local governments across the country okay. to, to support the land administration structures at the district level. Thank you. Thank you. Our land, our heritage for social economic development. The Ministry of Lands, well, people have raised issues of implementation of the land policy. What has happened five years down the road? And honorable members, I'd like really to report that the implementation of the NLP, uh, the land, national land policy, is work in progress. And as we speak, honorable speaker, the national land policy is being implemented. One, as uh, the Honorable Member from Trocare rightly and ably read out the policy, it states out, it states out policy actions that are supposed to be adopted. The first one is the amendment of the laws. And as we speak, Madam Speaker, we have already, uh, I think there are four or five bills which have been uh, already passed by Cabinet in line with the implementation of the National Land Policy. That is the Registration of Titles Bill, the Government Land Bill, uh, the, the survey bill and others. So we are working towards, uh, first of all, harmonizing the laws because the policy cannot be implemented if the prevailing or the existing legal framework has not been altered. And also there are parts of the constitution that need to be amended. So it's a, it's a, it's a work in progress and uh, currently we are, we are undertaking a lot of sensitization in terms of uh, implementation and uh, the policy calls for establishment of so many other bodies uh, for example, the mediation committees in, on Milo land, uh, in areas where Milo land is, uh, is, 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 is prevailing. Those committees need to be established by law. So, Madam Speaker, it's not true that the, land, uh, the national land policy is not being implemented. Mm. It is being implemented. Okay. But uh, maybe we can worry about the pace and the progress, but the fact is it is being implemented. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. The week of our awareness, we have done it in Soroti. Our land, your land, my heritage, your heritage for social economic development. I think it has been a very interesting debate. And if you talk about land matters, you'll talk until the cows come back home. We have talked and we have talked and the debate is still continuing. The debate is hot. But because the land question is very important in this country, let me hope we shall continue with this debate next week to ensure that everybody in Soroti brings out issues that affect or surround their land. Because of time constraints, we have come to the end of this program. And I'm your speaker, Agnes Nandutu. I aspire to inspire you before I expire. With powers converted upon